Hello, everyone, and welcome to Waking Up, conscious discussions about our changing reality. My name is Carolyn Greenlee, and I am here with a very special person. Her name is Wendy Rose Williams. And um, just just wait, um, she is she really is a gift. And I was really happy that she connected with me. Let me tell you a little bit about Wendy. Wendy Rose Williams had two near-death experiences in 1997 while she was pregnant. And uh, she met her angels for the first time while home alone, lying unconscious on the floor and again the night before surgery. Meeting her soulmate in 2010 uh, that Wendy con contracted to uh, with her waking up spiritually, led by uh, Dr. Michael Newton's um, Journey of the Souls. These two events in tandem triggered a rapid spiritual awakening and a wild ride as they worked to resolve 21 shared lives. Wendy has consciously been aware of more than 125 of her own past lives. The remarkable difference in Wendy's life from healing, her own energy inspired her to help others release pain, anxiety, and depression that no longer serves them. Wendy trained with Dr. Brian uh, Weiss of Many Lives, Many Masters that I have, uh, when he came out with those books many years ago, I grabbed those, um, he's, he's wonderful. Uh, and, um, and other leading experts to learn and facilitate past life regression and future life progression um, healing sessions. She is a certified spiritual teacher, Reiki master healer, past life regressionist, and she also channels Mary Magdalene. She's also the author of, is it two or three books that you have, Wendy? I have the third one's getting ready to be published. So there's two published yeah. now, and I'm also working on the fourth and the fifth. So they're starting oh, to come wow. more quickly. Fantastic. Okay. Can you just tell us the names of your books? Sure. Uh, they are on Amazon and Audible. And the name of the first book is Regression Healing One. The Huntsman uh, and the World War II Soldier. And the second one is the Flow One Plymouth Plantation. Wow. Wow. That's, it sounds amazing. And do you want to uh, tell us what the other two books are? Sure. Um, the times? book that's off being formatted right now that will be published next is Regression Healing Two, which is a nonfiction series of the most interesting client sessions, including some of my own uh, via Past Life Regressions. And this, it's Regression Healing to Joe and Marilyn. And then the next book that will be coming out after that is Regression Healing 3, Mary Magdalene Remembers. Wow. And just so to put people's minds at ease, I'm sure that you do um, have permission from your clients to use their- Absolutely. Their identities are blinded. I have them read the books ahead, you know, give them that choice, make yes. sure they're really comfortable. That's such a great point because client confidentiality, it's critical. Absolutely. So, yes. Absolutely. Um, yes. Anyone, Thank you for bringing that possible. up. Yeah, anyone in the spiritual field, we have access to a lot of things. And so our integrity, I think, is one of the first things that our guides and angels work with us, us on uh, because of the sensitive material and um, the sense the, the energies, you know, um, I mean, you are trained in energy healing as well. So you understand um, the different levels of, of energy fields that every human encompasses and one affects the other, you know, and it's like domino effects. So you really have to be uh, versed and, um, you know, in, you know, what, um, you know, for instance, um, energy healing, what could that trigger emotionally? What could, you know, what could happen next? And then having the tools um, available. And I know that you do, uh, you also have them. And one of them you're going to treat us to um, at the end, we're going to have a beautiful meditation from Wendy. Uh, 
Uh, but let me just finish here. Uh, she is also a co-host of Waking Up Spiritually, a podcast. And how often do you, is it every other week? It's, that you have this? it's twice a month. It's the second and fourth Sunday of the month. We do it live. And then it's also available on our website, wakingupspiritually.com. So everything is archived there. And we do them with PowerPoints. So it's kind of fun. If you like to have the visual uh, you know, versus just, just uh, listening to it and listening's great too. You know, you're driving, you're, you're making dinner, yes. doing whatever, but the various, various options are there. And I co-host it with Greg Kirk, um, who is an energy healer and friend um, from long ago. Okay. Okay, great, great. Um, let me see. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to have all of Wendy's um, contact information uh, because she does, she does many different things. Um, and, uh, and I want to make sure that people are aware of this, but uh, your own website is uh, wendyrosewilliams.com. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to have all of Wendy's links, how to connect with her at the end of this video. And also within the information, um, you know, even uh, through the audio versions. So I will make sure that if you, uh, you would like to connect with Wendy, that you can do so easily. Okay, so 1997 arrives. That must have been so scary for you. What's well, it was, what happened was, yes, absolutely. Um, what happened was I was newly pregnant and my uh, husband and I were just over the moon uh, because we had an 18 month old, but I had also had two ectopic pregnancies and there'd been infertility. So it was just a really big deal and was so happy to be pregnant. But what I was noticing was just this um, incessant heartburn that just did not feel right. And I'd called the OB office several times. And I also was having dreams um, that were bothering me. And it was the same dream uh, pretty much every night. And I would just see this big ship out in a terrible storm. And I would see all, all these things happening with like ripping and tearing, like the mass pulling off and the cleats and the winches and the ship would just break in two and go down. And I thought, what is up with that? I just don't understand. I love the water. I love boating. What, you know, what is, what is this about? But I just, I didn't know what to do with it. So what happened on the day of the first near-death experience, I was working at home. My husband's at work with one car. Our nanny is at the park with our daughter with the other car. And I just don't feel right so I'm trying to work, but I'm super restless and I keep going in the bathroom. I keep trying to lay down on the bed. I keep like clutching my stomach. Like, what is this awful, awful heartburn? And I was in the bathroom again. And I also had a feeling of impending doom. I have never had that feeling before or since. Do not ignore it. Really think about your circumstances and where you are and what your intuition is trying to tell you. Um, so I went into the bathroom thinking I'm going to be, I'm going to be sick. I just don't know how to relieve this, this pressure. And, um, I passed out on the floor because the most searing pain, I looked down in surprise because I literally thought what just happened? Someone stuck a knife in me. Um, and I just, I just went down, um, on the floor, uh, fortunately didn't hurt myself as I fell because uh, I was already kind of working my way toward the, the toilet and kneeling down when this, when this happened. And I came to only because there was this insistent voice saying, Wendy, Wendy, you've got to wake up now or you're going to go home. Mm -hmm. And I knew exactly what that meant. So I'm laying on the floor and I open my eyes in the bathroom and the bathroom was entirely lit up with the most beautiful white light I'd ever seen. And I could see several figures that were just gorgeous and so much light from them. And they were so large. They were like eight or nine feet big. And I'm like, my bathroom's filled with angels. 
I just, what, what do I do with that? I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And the angel is a male voice, very specific. He said, you've got to call for help now, or you're going home. He repeated it. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I I understand, but I, I can't walk. And he said, you just have to be willing to try. If you're willing to try, we can help you. Mm -hmm. So I got up on my hands and knees. And the minute I managed to do that, it was like being lifted. It was like being gently flown or assisted. Didn't have to get far, just had to get to the landline phone um, in the master bedroom right next Mm -hmm. um, to my nightstand. And I never thought to call 911, never crossed my mind. The angel just said, call for help. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to call my husband because he can get me to the hospital the fastest Mm -hmm. because he worked five minutes from home. Oh, and there again, divine intervention. I actually reached him at work. I don't think I've ever reached him at work before since like on the first call like that. Mm -hmm. And all I said was, can you come home right now? You need to drive me to the hospital right now. And I give him great credit because he didn't ask a single question. He just said, I'll be right there. And I just heard the phone slam down on his end. So I just had enough time to call the OB office, tell them what was happening. And they said, perfect. Get here as fast as you can. Don't park the car when you get here. We're going to meet you with a wheelchair. Just pull up um, to the entrance and we'll be right there for you. And they did, they took me straight up to the OBGYN office, which thankfully was located at the hospital Mm -hmm. and took me into an ultrasound room, tried to do an ultrasound, couldn't see a thing on the screen. All you could see was black. And I'm looking at the ultrasonographer. I'm like, is that machine on? Is that machine working? Mm -hmm. Uh, Because I've had ultrasounds before. I know we should be visualizing things here. Mm -hmm. And she just says, I could see her put her game face on and she said, everything's fine. I'm just gonna go get the doctor now. Mm -hmm. And she came back immediately with a physician and with a nurse midwife. So this room's getting crowded now. We've got the ultrasonographer, me, my husband. This room is very crowded. And the doctor tried adjusting, tried looking at it. And he just said, okay, we've got a severe bleed going on here. Um, and that's why we can't get any, any visual of anything on the ultra. It's just, it's just blood loss. It's just a huge blood loss going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, we need to admit you to the hospital right now. Um, so that's what they did. Um, and again, I was so grateful. I was right at the hospital. So I was taken right up, right up on the floor um, and admitted uh, directly into the hospital. Okay. So that's, that's how it all, all started. Okay. Okay. And then you in that same year, were you still pregnant when you had the second one? I was, uh, so I was 10 weeks pregnant um, when this occurred. So just end of the first trimester. So, you know, early, early in the pregnancy. And what happened was I was put into bed and told, okay, we need to figure out how to control this bleeding. We need to start infusing you. We've got to get some transfusions going on. And there we ran into a problem uh, because it turned out there had been a big um, train collision a few days earlier, which I didn't know, and they weren't finding any A negative blood for me. So that was a delay. And the physician, um, by then, my physician is there Mm -hmm. and talking with me and saying, We need to do surgery. I'm like, Well, what are we operating on? We don't know what's going on. And we don't have blood for me. He's like, you're right. I agree. We're just talking through the various Mm -hmm. possibilities here. We need to get you to stop bleeding. Mm -hmm. Um, So blood did arrive maybe about eight hours later. And I can't, I can't get out of bed. I have to stay in bed. I can't even get up to go to the bathroom because we've still got such an active Mm -hmm. um, bleed going on. So this went on for about three days And I was trying to visualize, um, I was trying to visualize it healing, whatever it was, which we still don't know. Um, And I'm just trying to um, basically stay on the planet. Mm -hmm. Um, But I was in and out of consciousness so much, I could feel myself slipping away. And what, what concerned me the most was I didn't really care. 
Um, I could feel myself giving up because it just felt more peaceful to be unconscious versus being in so much pain and not knowing what was happening. Mm -hmm. So they, of course, were taking very good care of me in the hospital, uh, monitoring my hematocrit each day. And it got to the point by about the third day that the physician looked me straight in the eye. I knew him well. I delivered my first baby with them, had gone through infertility, really trusted him knew he was um, a, a wonderful physician um, and just a great person. And he said, Wendy, you, you're, you're bleeding out. We, we need to call a spade a spade at this point. You need to have surgery. Will you please agree to surgery? And I said, yes. And he said, we're going to have to you know, discover during the surgery what the cause of the bleed is because we don't know ahead going in. What it turned out to be, so I agreed to have the surgery, and what it turned out to be was my uterus had ruptured at the very top, and it's an aorta called the fundus. That's why I was having all that horrible, what felt to me like heartburn. That's what that knife was that I felt had been just a stabbing pain. I felt like an organ had burst. Mm -hmm. And I was correct, but I'd been, <laughs> been hoping it was like a gallbladder or <laughs> something so not as essential. Do you think this was the ship, the, uh, the dream that you were having? Exactly. My ship was going down. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That was the dream, but I didn't know that the ship represented me. Um, and I didn't know. Um, and, and you know, I don't think I could mm -hmm. have done anything differently. I don't think calling 911 because I had a dream <laughs> was not going to be helpful, yes. but again, just be paying attention to your intuition is key. Absolutely. And, you know, um, a lot of people, um, you know, they move into fear all of a sudden. And the beauty about uh, being spiritually connected is that you can, you can then feel your guides and dangers around you. You can feel the universe supporting you and that whatever needs to be is going to be immediately, just like your husband. You know, it was, yes, everything is set up. Yes. The universe, your higher self knows exactly what's going to happen before it's going to happen. That is so, such a powerful point. Absolutely. Yes. yes Absolutely. Yes. So when I had realized that years ago, it really helped to just alleviate a lot of stress. I just, you know, surrender to the universe and know that the universe has my back. Yes, it's go with the flow, literally, and just try and have sense yes. of humor about it Absolutely. and just try and spiritually surrender because yes. things, yes, can be challenging at times, but yes, mm -hmm. the universe has our back. Yes, yes. Now, so your second near-death experience, was this prior to the surgery or during or after? It was the night before the surgery. So I had agreed to it and I'm just trying to relax after dinner that night. I'm trying to visualize a great outcome, but I am just so exhausted and so, um, so tapped out that what happened was the moment I pictured a great outcome. I went right out of my body and I went up and up and I could see myself going up through, up through the ceiling of the room. So I looked back and I looked at myself in bed and I'm like, oh my gosh, she is whiter than the sheets. She's really in a bad way. And I noticed, I thought, oh, interesting. I'm referring to myself in third person. And I knew I was my soul. I was my full, complete soul at that point. And I'm like, oh, she, she's fine in bed. I, I'm following this light because this is really, this is really interesting. So I floated up out of, out of the hospital and up and up. And I did have the thought, uh, again, sense of humor is so helpful. I'm like, oh, please don't make me walk through one of those long tunnels. <laughs> like you see on, on TV. I didn't know a lot about near-death experiences, but I must have heard or read that somewhere that that was part of my culture was, okay. well, if you're going through the light, you have to go through yes. this tunnel. Well, let, let me just interrupt you for a moment. Is, um, were you spiritually connected what, before this happened? No. Oh, okay. I was not. Uh, I was an MBA. I was a hardworking, busy, busy uh, working mother mm -hmm. um, in, in a not very happy marriage. Mm -hmm. 
and just really was not spiritually connected. So like I said, didn't know much at all about NDEs. (laughs) Yes. So we're traveling to the light, but some instinct came back in. I wanted to go to the light. So the minute I said, oh, please don't make me walk through a tunnel, Mm -hmm. this beautiful escalator, this pristine escalator with all this light coming out from it appeared in front of me instead. And I was like, oh, thank you. So I plopped my exhausted soul self on the escalator and went up and up and up. It just, it felt like it was far, but it felt like it took a second. I could feel like time changing and space changing. And at the top of the escalator, there was this welcoming committee waiting for me, perfectly um, aligned with your point, Carolyn, of it's already known and it's already set up to help us succeed. So the angels were there waiting My grandparents were there, both sets of grandparents, all the people I really loved. And I barely took one step off the escalator and they just gave me this big group hug. And I just felt so great and so relieved. And they said, welcome home. We're so happy you're here. We're so glad you made it. You've done nothing wrong and you're welcome to stay. So that same angel that had been narrating the spokesperson in my bathroom, I'm hearing him speak again. And I'm like, oh, I can stay. So I'm like trying to look over their shoulders and I'm trying to look around and I'm noticing they're like blocking me and holding me in that one location right where I'd arrived. And what they said was, we need you to listen because you need to make this choice now. And you do have a choice and you can choose to stay. Um, and as we said, you're so welcome and you've done nothing wrong by, by just leaving um, the earth at this point. But if you want to go back, we can tell you a few things. So I'm like all ears. I'm like, okay, what can you tell me? Let's make the best decision here. They said, if you go back, you will have a successful surgery tomorrow and you will fully recover. And we want you to know your baby will be born healthy. So this is huge. This is huge information. So I'm like, oh, wow. That makes me much more inclined to want to go back. Plus I had my my daughter. I've got this amazing toddler. So when the minute they said to me, what do you want to do? I could just see Tara's face. And I could picture this new baby that was coming and that I was going to be able to recover my health and be healthy. So, and then they added, there's one more thing we want to tell you so you can choose, so you can decide. If you go back, life is going to be very hard, likely for many years, because you're not on your life path. So I'm like, oh boy, what is my life path? So I'm asking them, I'm like, what, what am I missing? I really want to live. I really want to be on my path. I want to live my purpose. I want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And um, no one would answer. And I'm getting a little frustrated because this is critical information. So the guides and my my um, grandparents start being silly and they're like putting duct tape over their mouths and they're like, like like, like locking the key on their lips and throwing the key away. And I'm like, okay, you're, you're, you're not supposed to tell me I get it. I just need to let that go and be grateful for this experience that I've had the information that was shared with me. Um, And they gave me one more big group hug, because I chose to go back. And that time I realized it wasn't just unconditional love. We don't feel that very often, but to feel that, but I realized they were giving me an energy infusion. I don't think I would have survived the surgery the next day. They estimated I lost three quarters of my blood supply during this whole process um, and they weren't able to transfuse enough blood in. So I went home um, pretty pretty flat, 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 flat bunny. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And had to recover for for six weeks at home, uh, not able to even climb the stairs mm-hmm. um, to get up to the up to the bedroom more than once a day was all I could all I could manage. 
So, but was just so grateful for the experience Mm -hmm. and, and the help that I was given and the respectful choice. Cause I hear a lot of NDEers talk about, oh, I was pushed back into my body or I was just, you know, shoved back into my body or told it's not your time, get back in there. And I didn't have that kind of an experience. It just was so um, gentle and uplifting yet powerful and funny at times too. Yes. Um, and it was just so easy to go back down the escalator because they were all like waving to me and cheering me on. And I just went back in my body and it was that simple. That's beautiful. Really beautiful. Um, you know, um, you had written also somewhere that uh, you had a preview of coming attractions. Is this um, the child being, you know, being yes. born? Yes, what I meant by, because many oh. NDEers report that they get a life review and I didn't get um, any of that. The, the preview I got was that I would have a successful surgery and fully recover my health and that the baby would be born healthy. Um, and <laughs> Life would be hard for, okay. for likely many years until I got on my path, which didn't really start happening until 2010 when I met that soulmate that had the contract to wake me up spiritually. And he introduced me to Michael Newton's journey of souls. And that's when everything started to change. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Um, uh, yeah, that must have been, I mean, that, but the process from um, 1997, it was, or uh, yes, 97 until 2010. That's still, I yes. Mean, that's fine. Yes, um, it was, it was challenging. What happened was I did recover my health. I went back to work. And about six weeks after getting back to work, job I loved, I've been there for years, great performance evaluations, and just out of the blue, on a Friday afternoon, I get called into my boss's office, don't think a thing about it, and until I see HR sitting there with him, and I see their faces, and I know I'm going to be laid off. Okay. So I am laid off, that takes down the health insurance for the whole family, and I'm pregnant in this high-risk pregnancy and now have no health insurance. One week later, my husband's um, company tanks and he was self-employed with multiple partners. They employed about a hundred people, but they went deeply, sharply in the red very, very quickly. He has no um, unemployment insurance because he's self-employed. So we now have both of us out of work with no health insurance. Um, so that was the type of wild ride that we then went on. Um, we then divorced, uh, when our daughters were six and eight Mm -hmm. and I went through, um, a really interesting experience where I was purchasing um, a home with my, with my mother, um, to build on the back lot. And I ended up, um, losing another job, another out of the blue layoff that same day that we were literally closing on the house. So it's like, do you close on a house when you don't have a job? (laughs) Right. It's interesting and was in the middle of the divorce. Mm -hmm. So it's like, wow. So that was a big leap of faith, but I rebuilt, I rebuilt my life, um, the best, the best I could. Uh, We were co-parenting well. We did get the house built after some major, major delays. Um, And then, then I, I, uh, about six years after the divorce, I met the man who woke me up spiritually. Now, but between um, your near near death experiences and that time, um, were you choosing to reconnect spiritually to, I um, didn't know how I was so darn flat out busy and going through so much change with earning a living and parenting Mm -hmm. and, and then the separation and the divorce and my mom moving from across the country and trying to rebuild life and trying to uh, rebuild my career um, Mm -hmm. that That um, I just, I just don't think my guides and angels could find a way to fit it in. Um, so it was like, it was on a big pause. Mm -hmm. Nothing was forgotten, um, 
but it just, it just wasn't the right time. Yes. And that is a really good point uh, because divine right timing. Oh gosh. You know, many in the spiritual world, um, you know, especially with this ascension, with this, you know, the, the great awakening for humanity, um, they had expected it at certain time intervals, you know, um, you know, uh, 20, uh, was it 2012? And then yes. like, even before that, I mean, there were many opportunities for the ascension to really move forward and, and it had to stop. And we, you know, it, it put everyone kind of in limbo, it felt like limbo for a while, you know? Um, and, you know, but I mean, so it has been challenging, but yes, absolutely. It's in divine job, right timing. If the universe or your guys and angels sees there's some kind of danger with you moving forward or you revealing or exposing yourself, because this kind of work is uh, you are, you are, you have to release many layers, dense layers of the past. And I think that's what you were doing too. You were going through a, a tremendous healing journey. Um, even, even though you may not, not have realized it, right. Uh, everything, things are being adjusted, you know, exactly, exactly that you needed to be. And, uh, and yeah, it's absolutely, um, you know, what I always say is that if you're losing faith, that something isn't happening in the timing that you were told prior to, that means that something, you know, something has shifted and now you're a little on hold or, or something else has happened. It's, it's still happening in the background, right? But, but something else has come into play. And so, you know, there's also within the universe, we have the flow of the universe and we have this ebb and flow and the flow has to honor many, many things. And, you know, there, there are just so many different elements that's a great perspective, um, that, Carolyn. That come into play because the awakening is not just about us individually. This is all of humanity. This is the entire universe. And so everything needs to be, you know, all in sync. You know, something comes, gets out of alignment. Then we have to put it on pause a little bit. We have to work on this area here. But at that same time, we also have the opportunity to work on whatever is out of alignment in the universe or somewhere else that is pausing us we can work on that within ourselves too. Exactly. We're exactly. All right. Right. Yes. So uh, let me see. My next question is, um, okay. So um, you waking up spiritually, this was meeting this person, right? Yes. In the okay. most ridiculous way possible. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> it was via match.com and I had been oh. divorced for six or seven years and I had, you know, it was like asking girlfriends. I'm like, well, I, you know, I'd like to meet a great guy. I just, I feel ready again. Life's going well. I've got my career reestablished. My daughters are doing great. They were in their early teens at that time. We were finally in our dream home. My mother's living next door. It's a duplex, you know, just everything's going really well. We're just co-parenting uh, really successfully. It's like, I'm, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And so girlfriends tell me, well, you just need to go on match.com. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I have like no idea. <laughs> and so they helped me put together a profile and I, you know, I met a couple people and it's like, okay, I think I'm starting to understand this. And then I was starting to hear uh, my guidance and my intuition and my higher self better and better and didn't realize at first what that was. And I just got the inspiration one day. I heard you need to change the uh, distance parameters on match because I felt like I'd kind of like met everyone. I put them really, really um, tight, like at five miles or something in the beginning, just to be really, you know, sensible, meet somebody as mm -hmm. close to home and work as possible in my, my busy life yes. um, and respecting the other person probably had a very busy schedule too. And the minute I changed it to 10 miles, this new profile came up and I'm looking in shock on the screen. And I'm like, I know this man. I know this man. I know this man. So I'm like scratching my head. Where did we meet? And I'm like, not quite remembering him from. And as I'm reading his profile, it's like I'm two sentences ahead and I know what he's written, not in a not in a 
boring, mundane way, but just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote to him right away. And it's like, where do we know each other from? And I just, I just asked him, he's like, I feel like I know you too. Uh, so it took us a couple weeks to arrange schedules and meet for lunch. Mm -hmm. And we could not stop talking. We were in that restaurant for three hours. And I, I think we both would have stayed the rest of the day back to get back to work. Mm -hmm. And it just was amazing. And what we realized was we had not met in this lifetime. It was our past lives. So we became uh, spiritual seekers together and just had this amazing uh, romance for over a year uh, that was very challenging. I would call it the highest highs and lowest lows uh, type of, of romance because there was a lot of karma and I hadn't realized and really understood what that meant. So we had a lot of lessons to complete with each other um, and we, we did that. And then when he ended the relationship, um, I was shocked, devastated, but as I adjusted to it over time, it was the greatest gift to me um, because we were not uh, able to be together um, in this lifetime. Um, just some other key, key, key values did not align. So we, but what we did was we reconciled and I've never done this before. When I've been done with a romance, I've, I've been done, you know, I, as peacefully and kindly as I can give closure close the door, just, just be done, move on. But we kept meeting and re-meeting in mysterious, odd ways. And that got my attention. And I realized that meant we still had more work to do. So we, we worked together as, as friends um, and, and worked on being spiritual seekers together for about eight years. Good. So Good. Yeah, that, was, that was how that, how that relationship went. And you had discovered all the past lives with this person? Uh, it, took, it took eight years. One just came up recently, but um, I'm, I'm told it's now complete. The, the trifecta is complete okay. <laughs> in 21. Good. Okay. So, yeah, and we haven't, we, we parted peacefully a few years ago, um, okay. but um, yeah, just one came through recently and I worked it on my own. Okay. And what inspired you to reach out, find Dr. Brian Weiss? What inspired me was I, I love to read. I'm a voracious reader as are most, most writers. And I had discovered some of his books and his work and I heard his voice. He has the lovely just this calm, calm, angelic type of voice and energy and presence. So I started reading his books and I went to one of his one day seminars for the general public uh, down in Portland. I live in Seattle. So took a weekend trip and went down to Portland because I was considering, do I want to do the full training with him, which will mean I will need to fly to upstate New York and, and pay for the training and, you know, the travel and the week there. So do I want to invest in this? So I had such a great experience with that single day um, that it's like, yes, I'm absolutely meant to do this. So went and trained with him at the Omega Center um, in Rhinebeck, New York, and just had an incredible week. Uh, so glad I did it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, let's see. So at what point did you decide, I mean, was that it? You decided, okay, I am, I'm, I'm going to, this is going to be my profession. When did I go all in? <laughs> my profession. Yes, I'm all I, in. Yes, I went all in in stages. Um, what happened was because of reading Journey of Souls and because my boyfriend um, at that time, when we connected on Match, he'd written something very intriguing as the last sentence that probably no one, uh, few people would respond to. And what he'd written was any woman on a spiritual journey, particularly interested in exploring an LBL would be of the most interest to meet. 
So I'm immediately like LBL, LBL, what does that stand for? I better Google this because and verify with him what he's talking about. Uh, and it was life between lives. It was Dr. Michael Newton's life between lives, spiritual regression. Okay. And what happened was because of my, my boyfriend having had several past life regressions himself and preparing for his second LBL, Life Between Lives, and just generously sharing with me how they had changed his life. I mean, I was just lit up from reading the book and thought, I have to have one of these sessions. I have to go for past life regression. I don't even really know what it is, but I just have to go. So he found the first therapist for me to go to and drove me to my first um, past life regression in 2011. And then he drove me to my first life between lives in 2012. Um, and then I facilitated what happened was it was just so uplifting and life-changing for me that I then found quantum healing hypnotherapy with Dolores Cannon uh, methodology, had several sessions with QHHT practitioners. And at that point, I just knew um, it was becoming so obvious I was meant to train for it. So I trained as a past life regressionist. So the, the training with Dr. Weiss came later. I'd already trained with a Cannon okay. um, therapist. And I became a Reiki master because there were so many just energy issues coming up and I knew I needed to ground. I didn't know how, and I didn't really know how to clear my energy. And I knew I was meant to be raising my vibration, but I just needed tools and techniques and how to, and I'm reading books and just doing everything I can to figure it out. But I needed some formal training. And I also needed to work with a spiritual teacher. So I found my first spiritual teacher in 2013. And that was like a night and day difference of how much better things went, um, how much faster things went. It also was the hard stuff came up in spades, uh, because as, as you uh, alluded to also, because you've really got to do our work. But now I had the support system of someone to go to when I was really confused or really just got knocked off my feet and was really having problems, I had a teacher to go to um, that could help me. And through her, she then began um, teaching um, uh, certified spiritual teachers. So it's like, I am all in on that. I need this information. Mm -hmm. So I had gotten a lot of wonderful training um, and still was working the full-time um, day job um, for a healthcare system, for a hospital. Uh, so life was really, really busy because uh, again, single mom, uh, raising two teenagers, home, mom next door, animals, you know, all, all the wonderful yeah. things in life. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so it was, it was hard, um, you know, juggling, juggling all the balls. So when I went all in, um, it was via a layoff. Um, I got an unexpected, uh, very upsetting um, layoff about five years ago, and I could hear as clear as day because by that point, um, you know, I had learned to meditate. I had learned to do all the things I wish I had started on a little bit, a little bit earlier. But, you know, your path is your path. Yes. Uh, you just have to just have mm -hmm. to uh, have some sense of humor about it. And I knew despite my fantastic um, experience, 30 years experience, despite my MBA degree, I could hear my guide saying, you're not going to find a job because you're meant to be a solopreneur. We want you to be spiritually employed full time at this point. And I'm going, ah, that's too much. That's too scary. I have two daughters in college by this point. We've got to pay for that. I'm the only one really contributing to that. I'm like, oh my goodness. And I'm like, what about the 403B? <laughs> like I'm getting these employer contributions to you know, help with retirement. And I was, I went into a pretty hard tailspin, but I, I did what I was asked to do and stepped to the plate and did my best to surrender and say, just show me the way, how can I go all in? Mm -hmm. And they did. they did, and I did. Yes, and yes. And um, that, that, that's key, surrendering. Because yes. the thing where we're supposed to be moving towards, we're just delaying the process. And we are the ones that are creating more difficulties. Exactly. So, 
Exactly. Yeah. When you feel that fear, you've just got to sit down and really have a dialogue with it and ask for help, you know, ask mm-hmm. however you relate to it, ask your intuition, what to do your higher self, your guides, God, the goddess, whatever you relate to, whatever comforts you and is just the best guidance for you tune into that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mary Magdalene, when did, how did that come about? Uh, because yeah. I, I, I feel that channeling is, is some, especially someone like you who is not spiritually aligned, you know, in the beginning, you were very, um, you know, right brain. Um, how did you, how did you get to a point where you could surrender yourself enough to open yourself enough to allow that type of energy to come in? Yes, that was that was a challenging path too. Um, I was told by um, a different spiritual teacher that I also um, worked with after the original one, and uh, we were friends. And she just was able to help me with things. And she said, "Well, do you know? Are you aware that you do have a contract? You did plan before you incarnated. You know." Plans can always change and you have to be willing once you're here. But do you realize you have a contract with Mary Magdalene and Yeshua and Mother Mary to channel the three of them? And I'm like looking at her initially with horror going, that's too big for me. Mm -hmm. Um, That is just that that's beautiful. And I do feel the privilege but uh, I was actually, I, and then I did move forward. It's like, okay, I want to get training for channeling then. Um, some people are wonderful natural channels and they don't ever need to or choose to, but I, I chose to get formal training. So I worked with that teacher and I took channeling and I took it slowly um, because that was what I needed to do. So I took the four modules over about uh, two years time rather than uh, racing, racing through them quickly, um, because I needed to, uh, clean up my energy and I needed to get my ego in balance. And I needed to release so much fear because uh, I had a lot of fear around publicly sharing the books. The books were very stopped up too. I knew I was meant to be writing and publishing, but I just didn't dare do it. I wouldn't do public speaking, let alone channeling. Um, There was a lot of fear from, uh, it was past life energy. It was uh, poor outcomes from having done that in the past. We've uh, all had them. Uh, But again, you've also got to find the lives where you had wonderful outcomes from it. And again, um, my sense of humor uh, just really helped save me. And I'm like, oh gosh, wow, look at that. Another life where I got beheaded. (laughs) For speaking the truth, or I got, you know, burned at the stake Mm because all I did was heal a dog. You know, it's like, oh my goodness, people. Yes. (laughs) You know, just so much, um, so much judgment of others and just such harsh, you know, harsh attacks and realities. And don't be a victim. Realize we have both been on both sides of that. I've absolutely, you know, thrown the match. And that was very, um, the first book that I was able to write, um, Regression Healing One, it's actually my former boyfriend's uh, past life regression session with me. And he graciously said, please go ahead and share it. And as I said, you know, very carefully uh, blinded everything and allowed him to change anything. So it was comfortable to him. Mm-hmm. But what we discovered as we went through these three lives in detail for him, we discovered none of them spoke to the, the uh, issue we were trying to heal, which was he had severe neck pain. He'd been a professional athlete and he had broken his neck mm. and he'd had surgery, but he still was having a lot of neck and shoulder pain in particular. So that's what we had wanted to work on. And the three lives we found didn't heal it. So I just simply turned it over to his guides and said, take us there. We need to go to the life to heal this. Can we heal this? And it then went into um, some pretty gnarly uh, two more lives where he had been uh, tortured and harmed and he had not forgiven the people involved fully. 
Mm -hmm. So that's why he was still feeling all this pain and literal pain in the neck. And I did say to him at one point, who's being the pain in the neck? Mm -hmm. And he had to forgive his mother um, in his current life, who he loves and has this amazing relationship with, but it's complex. Mm -hmm. So she had been one of the people and I was the other one. Oh. I had been the inquisitor um, when he was being tortured. So he had to fully forgive me and I had to fully forgive him. And when we did that and did it through multiple lifetimes, that's when we both started really getting on the right path in life. Okay. Okay. So, so this that was is, a big turning point. Mm -hmm. This is a really interesting point is that someone who is dealing with a, um, a physical, you know, issue that they just can't seem to, you know, to, uh, to move past it. Um, these past life regressions that you do does help facilitate. Where did that come from? Where did yes. that actually happen? That energy we go to the lifetime of origin. That's the concept. Okay. Yeah. You call it yeah. the lifetime of origin. Lifetime of origin. You know, where, where, where is this coming from? Where did this originate? Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's because our souls are eternal and energy can't be destroyed. And sometimes we're carrying old baggage with us. Mm -hmm. So let's just choose to look at it as a gift and unpack it mm -hmm. layer by layer and just figure out what's really going on here. And often it's that we have not forgiven ourselves, forgiven others, mm -hmm. or we don't have the right boundaries. We don't have pristine boundaries where we can feel safe and be loving ourselves first and foremost, you know, we can be giving just too much away um, or be giving too little away. Um, you know, just getting those, getting those boundaries mm -hmm. in, in yes. place in a healthy way is a big deal. Oh yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You, you know, you, you bring up many, many wonderful points um, you know, that there are so many, so many things are connected. <laughs> Um, and so many different layers, especially with um, things that we have carried lifetime after lifetime. And I have found sometimes it just seems to build, you know, sometimes if we are resistant, you know, because um, I believe that when, you know, we, we come back, we are, we always have that opportunity or we choose that opportunity to resolve that issue. So we're, we're walking. A lesson that, presents yeah. again in a different way. And it's right. typically bigger and harder because we didn't get it in the more subtle form. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we then go on home and we, we, are able to uh, rejuvenate and heal to a certain level. But if we're still not getting something, um, we, we plan it out again and just, just let, let, let the play, <laughs> let, let the curtain rise and let the play, right. um, and um, then, you know, uh, resume. And then also sometimes you come back as the other side of the situation. Absolutely. Because you need that perspective in order to forgive. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. We've all been the proverbial saints and sinners mm -hmm. because uh, I was pretty horrified to learn that I had tortured my former boyfriend who I loved very, very much. Um, and that, that really was hard uh, to learn. So I, I cried harder in that session than in any other session. And he was, he was pretty um, dry eyed about it. He's like, Oh, okay. I just need to forgive these two people. That was so long ago. We've all been on both sides of the coin. It's just a circle completing. I mean, he was like pretty, <laughs> pretty blase about it. Yes. But what was beautiful, we had used the pain scale, um, like massage therapists and physical therapists do. And I had asked him, what is your pain with your neck on a daily basis? I'd asked him at the beginning and he said, it can be as bad as an eight or a nine, but it's really life limiting, but I don't want to be taking medication for it. I know there's something I can figure out and let go of. And at the end of the session, I said, how does your neck feel? And he said, oh my gosh, I can like move so much better. And it's down to like a three. 
Wow. And I checked in with him, you know, for years after that. And he's like, it's still, you know, it's still, I still have to work with it a bit, but it's still down there around like a, like a three, a two or a three. And it's so much better. I, you know, it really, it really changed my life. Yes. Um, uh, one of the, um, the reasons that I want, you know, for this podcast, you know, is to, to help people to understand, um, better ways of, of, of moving forward. Okay. And let me just kind of go back a little bit. Um, what many call the matrix, you know, um, I see that as, you know, we're, we, we chose to come here and experience a dualistic type of reality and we have choice in, you know, in, in, in all of that. Um, however, there has been a structure a container for us to experience that negative side. And so there are those who are in charge of constructing different things. And part of that is, um, you know, villainizing, um, you know, those who practice spiritual ways, you know, long ago, trying to create division, trying to anything to separate the self from their innermost truth and from one another and to begin to fear and all that that's the other side you know that's that the ego-based reality that was created so um so i also believe that when we are dealing with illnesses when we are dealing with you know um situations on whatever level of being that is we don't you know humanity is not connected to the tools to heal those things to understand those things anymore. So that's where, you know, people like you can help to, uh, to get them to remember, to realize, yes. ah, just, those just are the words out of my mouth is going to say it's there, but we just have yes. to remember and yes. be able to discern our own truth. Yes. Yes. And then choose differently. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is that choice. We are so incredibly powerful but so many people have um, believed the untruths and bought into the fear and have lo really lowered their vibration uh, in a way that really does not serve them. But, you know, um, our truth is that we are so incredibly powerful that we can heal ourselves from the inside out on, in so many ways. So. Absolutely. Um, so I really appreciate the work that you do. And um, well, likewise, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me see here. So you, for, you said that in the beginning, you had, you, you did not know how to even connect with your guides and angels, how to really you know, um, tune into all these wonderful tools and gifts that are available to you. But now, I mean, you've got a such a huge 180 in your life. And now you are able to connect to your guides and angels, yes. and, you know, and, and do so much. So uh, can you tell us or, 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 and I think this, you have a special, a specific meditation, uh -huh. you help people to connect to their guides and angels. Yes. Because I, I feel when we can get that, that guidance. And again, some can relate to it as their own higher self and that's fine, but mm -hmm. just feeling that love and that unconditional support and that wisdom, that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's many wonderful business people and they feel it as their intuition. And again, that's fine. But the way, uh, would you like to do the meditation right now? If you are ready. Sure, absolutely. So my belief is everyone has um, at least one guide and we're able to connect with them and get that support mm -hmm. and just, uh, as I said, get that wisdom and just treat them as, uh, you know, a, a friend, a mentor, whatever feels right to you. So I invite you to close your eyes if you're somewhere safe or you can just take a moment. And for those who are listening um, later, um, this will work very well for you um, when, you're, when you're not driving and able to just relax and be in a safe place. So what we're going to do is take a beautiful walk on a summer day, just the right temperature, feeling great 
as you easily walk up the path. Sometimes the path goes to the left, sometimes the path goes to the right, but you are confident you're able to follow that path and know that you're going up and up and up to the top of the hill, feeling that beautiful sun warming your body, relaxing your body, that life-giving sun, just making you feel happy and healing you from the inside out. You may notice some beautiful trees, flowers, shrubs, herbs along the way on either side of the path, and you're welcome to reach out and touch any of those that are especially appealing to you. You might feel the petal smooth feel of a rose, for example, and smell that vibrant scent. You've now reached the top of the hill. And as you look around you, you see you're standing in a grove of trees, a grouping of trees. As you step out of that grove of trees, you realize, you notice you're in a clearing. Directly in front of you is another grove of trees and you sense, you know your guide is there. So happy to reunite with you. Your guide now steps out of the grove of trees on their side and joins you. You're able to see and hear and sense and know and feel what your guide looks like. I'm going to be quiet for a moment so that you can have that experience. Tune in to how your guide presents to you. It can be anything. It can be surprising. Just go with your first instinct. Trust your instinct. And now ask your guide what their name is. What name can you use for them? Yes, we've all had many names, but let's just agree on a name that you can use so you can connect with your guide on your own going forward from today forward, anytime you want, just call them by name. So discover that name and you'll know it now. And your guide has a gift to share with you. And they're going to give you a gift in a beautiful gift box. And this gift is going to be very meaningful, very useful and practical in your life today. So go ahead and accept this wonderful gift from your guide and take that gift box in your hands. You're able to remove the lid and clearly see and sense and feel feel and know what this gift is for you. Notice not only what it is, but how does it make you feel to have this amazing gift from your guide and know that this is the first of many. And if you don't understand what the gift is, ask your guide and they can explain it to you. Again, just notice any emotions and be willing to feel them. And your guide now has a moment to share a message with you. And I'll be quiet and just hold that space for you to hear a message from your guide that will help you in your life today.
plastic. Well, everyone's getting a message from their guide. And know if you'd like more time with this, you can listen to the recording again. Or as you're falling asleep at night, ask your guide to visit you in your dreams and to send you helpful messages that you'll be able to remember and to accurately interpret. And you're welcome to call on your guide at any time as you meditate, as you take a couple deep breaths, just feel their loving presence and wisdom. You can also muscle test to speak with them and connect with them and get accurate information from them. As you learn how to communicate with them, you can use oracle cards. There's so many ways. Just have fun deepening the communication with your guide, and they will be there for you with their love and with their wisdom and with their support. So let's thank the guides for coming in for us so clearly. Your guide is now going to turn and go back into the grove of trees on their side, but no, they'll be nearby anytime you want to call on them. And you're able to turn and go back into the grove of trees on your side and to come easily back down the hill more easily than you went up, more quickly than you went up able to be fully, fully conscious and comfortable back in the current day and time, now fully connected with your guide. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and gently orient back to the present day and time. Wonderfully connected with your guide. <laughs> Well, thank you, Wendy. That was wonderful. My thank pleasure. Oh, yes. My pleasure. Yes. I, I was surprised. Is there <laughs> anything you would want to, to share? Well, um, actually, um, at first I thought it was because I'm, I'm connected to many of my guys and days. Yes. And um, there was one, there is one that you had mentioned that I really um, hadn't been conscious of. Well, we haven't been working together um, as well, we've been, we've always been connected. Uh -huh. this is Joshua. Wonderful. Um, years ago, I remembered um, that I used to also be one of his guides. Fantastic. And and oh, but beautiful. I also, when I was uh, very young, he was the one that would, you know, at night when I would cry myself to sleep because um, I felt like such an oddity, you know, oh. here in this in this life um, that he would wrap his his wings around me often. And whenever, uh, you know, whenever I was fearful, I, I would always feel his presence also. And so it's been quite a while and uh, many, many years that I've actually, um, you know, chosen to connect directly to him, uh, because I've been so busy <laughs> connecting with everybody else that, uh, you know, along my journey, my path, because, you know, I'm very old and, um, you know, and, and the soul level. And so I work with many. And so it's really nice because um, right now I know I am moving into, uh, I'm stepping up, you know, again, you know, as, as everyone is, um, you know, moving into uh, a deeper embodiment of, of my purpose here also. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's really nice that he's now stepping forward and he's going to be one of my companions as oh, that's fantastic. Uh, as we do this all together. It'll I be see uh, Yeshua Jesus as a world teacher and so many people are able to receive because he has such unique, gentle, yet powerful energy and it's nothing to do with religion. You don't need to be Christian or Catholic or Jewish or it's nothing to do with that. We're talking energy. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just, that's just fantastic. Yeah, well, see, wonderful. I, I feel he, he is the energy of love. Yes. And, uh, and that 
religions, uh, they have really misinterpreted um, what he about. He came here as a teacher of love and it went off in a whole different direction. <laughs> sure did. Sure did. So. Sure did. <laughs> wow. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us, Wendy? I would just like to encourage people, uh, please uh, visit my website and you're welcome to request a 15 minute um, complimentary uh, phone conversation with me there. We can explore if I might be of service to you. Uh, please check out the books on Amazon and on Audible under my full name under Wendy Rose Williams, or you will get to a lot of other Wendy Williams. <laughs> Okay. So that's why I use my, use my full name and please uh, check out the waking up um, archives and see if there might be some podcasts there to help you with things that you're working on. A lot of people are just like struggling with, well, what's a soulmate? I just can't understand this. I can't get this straight or just need some energy management basics or whatever else might be of, of service to you. Okay. And that's in your podcast. Yes. And that's at wakingupspiritually.com. Okay. Um, you'll find all the podcast archives there. Mm -hmm. um, they're at a YouTube channel also, and they're on the podcast apps. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. So however I you like your media. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, and again, I will have all of Wendy's information so that you can connect with her or learn more about her. Um, also, so, um, you know, I would love for you to come back and, you know, we can talk about, um, you know, possibly channeling um, uh, Mary Magnum or Joshua, you know, so I'd love to thank you for the invitation. That would be fantastic. That would be great because there's so much happening now. So it there would be nice to is. hear. And, and the ascended masters and the angels and our guides, they just really want to share their love and uplift and their clarity uh, with us because there is a lot of uh, confusion um, because just so many things are changing so rapidly that people are having their belief systems break wide open and then they're struggling with, well, what do I believe and what do I do and what do I embrace and what do I let go of? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And uh, one of the uh, messages from my guys and angels uh, within the uh, within the last week is that it's safe now. Yes, it's now safe. Many of the dangers. And that's another reason why the ascension hasn't gone smoothly like many people had expected is because there's a lot of different elements and some of those elements presented a danger and yes. they did not want to repeat the whole burning at the stake uh, situation and, you know, um, placing anyone in harm's way. I agree. Um, um, by, by just, you know, it, sharing their truth. Um, I agree. And, the energy you know, of peace on earth and throughout the galaxies, it's here. It's yes. absolutely here, yes. but we've got to okay. find it within so mm -hmm. that that can just, just radiate out. Yes. Uh, because that's probably a surprising statement to people um, mm -hmm. for me to say that, but it is absolutely here. And I'd love to get into more specifics about that. Yes. If that's of interest. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I know speaking with, with people, you know, when I, I, I just, I make sure as soon as I wake up, I tune into, you know, what's really going on. You know, I tune into my soul and it is, you know, always just expanding. And it just, I just wake up, you know, with a big smile on my face, connect, <laughs> you know, consciously connect. And we, we have to be consciously making these choices. And um, to me, everything is just opening up. It's just, it's just exciting. You know, it's like this exciting journey that's opening up and so many things are, are happening. However, if you are just looking at, you know, the news or, you well, know, please turn that off. Oh my I, God. That, that is, that's yes, one of the paths to freedom. I turned off the news pulls you in five years ago. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And so that those it's people, programming, it's yeah, not absolutely. helping you. No, no. No, so I mean, you sure you might need to check the weather, but there's a together. difference in looking for information versus letting this programming, the doom and gloom report, just lower your vibration and frighten you. 
that, and that's, that's not helpful designed to do. That's what it's designed to do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. It's distraction too. Yes. Yes. But again, we have choice. Right. Right. Um, and we can, we can change everything. Ever. Yes. Yes. So, well, Wendy, it has been an absolute honor and a pleasure for you to be here. And, um, and I, I also, I thank your guides and angels as well, because, um, you know, and that's something that we connect to, you know, uh, in the beginning of the shows is uh, just um, calling all of our guides and angels in to make sure that we are aligned with, uh, with what it is that humanity needs to hear today. Yes. And, um, so, so that, because that's what we're, what we're here to do. This is the spiritual work and in doing our spiritual work, there was such a tremendous joy in it, isn't there? Yes. Yes. Well, thank yeah. you, Carolyn. I just so appreciated the conversation with you and the work that you're doing. One last question is how do you feel now knowing that you are on your life's mission, your life's purpose versus. In the oh beginning. my goodness. The feeling, I still feel relief, just joy, contentment, peace. I just feel it, it's just, it's night and day. I didn't start uh, waking up until I was 49. Um, so it's 11, it's 11 years later. And it's just, I just don't recognize uh, where, where I was, um, you know, versus, versus now there's so much more happiness. My health is so much better. There's just so much more harmony that, that point you made about the universe always has our back. Mm -hmm. That's, I believe the biggest decision you can make. Do you truly believe consciously and subconsciously and unconsciously that the universe has your back? Or do you feel like everyone's always out to get me? That is the critical choice that we have to make. And if it's the latter, and a lot of people do feel like that, then it's time to consider, do you need to do some healing sessions? Do you need some assistance? Because that's where that's where I was. Mm -hmm. Even though I tried to be positive, and have a smile on my face and, you know, do my best job. But because I wasn't doing any of the spiritual work and didn't understand the energy, um, it was a slog. It was just a hard slog. Yes. Yes. Um, Yeah. We have a lot of material that we could cover in future podcasts. So yes, I I hope that you come back again. Um, This has been great. And thank you very much for that beautiful meditation. Um, you know, I, I, well, we'll talk about it, um, you know, afterwards too, but, okay. um, but I, I really, really appreciate, uh, I pr- appreciate your time. I appreciate your journey. I appreciate your bravery. And I'm so glad that you chose to come back <laughs> and, uh, and to be here with us and to, to share what you've learned and to assist people in, in their own healing and moving forward. Me so, too. I couldn't be happier. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you all for tuning in and either listening or watching us. We truly appreciate you. And I wish for you abundant blessings. Okay.